Hi everybody, this is Kelly Swanson and I'm going to give you a quick overview of the Early Learning GPS. This is a special overview for Community Innovation Zone grantees. And as we go through it, I want you to think about um, the activities you're already planning to engage families and also to work with early learning programs and school districts as a way to collaborate uh, with their families. And there's going to be a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities in this tool to be able to share information with people in your community. So one of the things to think about is that we are getting registered accounts by county and by city in a lot of cases. So we have the opportunity of sharing some of your local events, some of your local resources, and other things. And I'll show you how you can possibly do that. You can get access to all of that information on the CIZ intranet on the PA Keys website. This video will also be posted there as well or a link to this video will be posted there as well. So continue to think about that as we give you a quick overview. And um, if you have any questions, here is my email address, kelswa at berksiu.org. And I'm just going to make sure that this is working properly. And it is. Excellent. So what I'm going to first do is, um, here you'll notice that we have a link here to the Pennsylvania's Promise for Children website, which is PAPromiseForChildren.com. If you're not familiar with that website, there is a lot of content on there that is very valuable. There's also a lot of stories from families about the impact of quality early learning. And you'll see we have sections on why the first five years matter, help your child grow, choose a quality program, making ends meet, and become a children's champion. So we average about 6,000 visitors a month to that site. If you haven't already checked it out, you should, and uh, feel free to link to it from your websites. So to get to the Early Learning GPS, you go to www.earlylearninggps.com, and we had a new release of this tool in November 2015. So even if you've seen it before, there's some new features. The other great thing that start, we started in November is we have an app. So you can get it from the App Store, the Apple, for Android, and for Kindle. And if you create an account online here, that account is available. You can log into that account in your app. So most of the features you'll see here are available in the app. So it's a great tool. Um, if you're going to share this with families, what we've been doing is encouraging them to bring a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone so that they can follow along. So the first thing you're going to want to do yourself and encourage families to do is register, create a family account. So the way this works is you'll create a family account and then you can create maps for each child. It's all free and we encourage families to create one account, family account, so that they can share amongst each other. There's a lot of tools and resources you can save and this way they can share those and communicate inside the GPS as opposed to having three different GPS accounts created. So they'll add their first name, last name, email, create a password. Um, they can put in their city and then they can put in their county. And the benefit of the county is not just so that we know where people are from, but they can, um, when they search for local resources, it can be sorted by, filtered by their home county. That's something that they can also change if you move. And then if you're interested in signing up for some of our e-newsletters, you can do that here. Again, you can do that later on, but if you wanted to do that here. So I'm going to log in because I'm already registered. Now, if somebody did not want to create an account, there was a little button that said continue as guest. So what they can do there is they can access the quiz, they can search for resources, and that's pretty much it. So we try to encourage people to create an account. Now, what you'll see here on the top is I have a number of counts of family child maps down here. And if you just create an account, this is what came up when you created your account. This is where you can add each child. So a child from before birth, prenatal to age six, can be entered and create a map. So if you are, if a family is pregnant, expecting, they can add in the due date as opposed to the birth date. And then as the child, once a child's born, they can add in the birth date. If they're uncomfortable, even though this is all encrypted and confidential, if they're uncomfortable putting the actual birth date in, we recommend that they put the first day of the month in. 
And the reason why that's important is that there are three different quizzes in this tool. There's one for infants, for toddlers, and for preschoolers because we talk about development. So the answers change based on the age of the child. And this way, if they come in and the child is an infant or prenatal, as the child gets older, they will get different information. So you'll see here I have a number of different accounts, and if I switch, or different maps, if I switch maps, the name changes up here. And then we've got this rotating message that's coming up. And if you have the uh, app, these are actually push notifications. So you do have to enable push notifications for that to work, but then you get a weekly notification. And some of these expire. They're based on what's going on in at that time of year, but we have events that are going on. It may be um, tips dealing with holiday stress, for example. Oh, I missed it. It'll come back. Um, dealing with holiday stress, we have an article about that. It may be books and song ideas. Now, this is something to think about for your grant. Are there things that you would like to share with families in your community that we could put out as a push notification. So one example is we will definitely do a push notification about kindergarten registration. So in early spring, we'll start putting some of those messages out and we have information on the PA's Promise website about where to go to register. In our next release, of this, which will happen in the spring, we will have the ability to customize push notifications by the county and by the age of the children. So, for example, if your county wanted um, had one page where all this information was and you wanted us to send a push notification, if you were having a school uh, county-wide kindergarten registration event and you wanted us to send a push notification to families who had preschoolers in that county, we'll be able to do that in the spring. So if there are things that you're sending out over email blasts, if you have tweets that you're sending out about events or specific resources in your community, think about sharing those with us to put in as push notifications. So here we are on Murphy's map and I'm going to show you a few of the features. We have the quiz, which we'll look at in a little bit. We have a place where we can upload photos. So this can be like an online scrapbook. We have a place where you can add to-dos, and we've put some suggested to-dos in here. We have the save tips, which we'll look at later. We have a notes field. Now this is a pretty cool field because it shows up throughout the GPS. So you, as a family, can leave notes for each other. It's almost like an inbox for each other. So if you see a particular tip and you want your sister to see it, you can leave a note. If you have a question that you want to ask a doctor because you looked at a tip and you now have a question, you can add the question right in so you don't have to remember or put it somewhere else. And then search and saved resources. So this is a place where if you had uh, if you were looking for parenting classes in your community or you wanted to look for something on how do I deal with teething or breastfeeding, you can just come in here and put in uh, a keyword. So that one didn't come up. Let's see if breastfeeding comes up. You can put in a keyword and then just access those resources directly. Okay, so we got a local resource, women, infants, and children, and then I want to look at this later, so I'm going to save it to my map. And then a couple of online resources about breastfeeding, a video, a couple of video, a video and a website. So these are other things to think about, and if you go to the PA Keys, the CIZ Internet on the PA Key website, there's going to be a spreadsheet in there where you can add in your suggested local resources and online resources. So what's the difference? Local resources would be like classes, food pantries, things that are available in your community. So if you have particular activities that are ongoing or classes that you want to share, you can give us that information on the spreadsheet. We will put it in here. We will filter it by your county. Let us know what counties it are. it is. Online resources are anything that we can find online, videos, games, articles. Now, they have to be reliable sources, 
resources, but if there are certain resources that families ask you for all the time, that you use all the time, to share those on that spreadsheet as well. And again, all of that is on the CIZ intranet in the document section. There's one on early learning GPS, so that's where you can get that information. The other features here, we have three tabs, the Milestones tab, the Activities tab, and the Program Checklist tab. The Milestones tab is based on Octel's Watch Me Grow checklist. So these are things that a child typically can do between age birth and age five. So they're broken out between three and six months. And if a child can do two or more things, you can put a checkbox. And then you can add a note. So you can add in when it happened, or if you have a question or a concern that you want to share with someone else. You could also make a note that maybe you, they met this milestone, you took a photo of it, and you uploaded it to the map, and you want to leave a note that you did that. So these go all the way to five years old. And it's another kind of online scrapbook of your child's development. This is something that's pretty popular. A big, big question that parents always have is, how do I know my child's going to be ready for kindergarten? How do I know that they're meeting milestones? And this is a great tool for that. Yes, I would like to save my changes. The next tab is the Activities tab. So this is different than what we had before. This was changed in November 2015. And what we have in here now is a searchable database of hundreds of activities that came from Octel's Parent Guide. So they're all based on Pennsylvania's Early Learning Standards. And what you can do now is you can search either by keyword. So let's say you wanted to do something with a ball or leaves. You can search by whether it's in the home or out and about. So there are some activities that are pretty specific to like doctor's offices or the grocery store. Um, but most of the at-home ones you could do out in the world as well. Then you can have infant, toddler, or preschooler activities. And then what skill you're looking at. So are you looking at creativity? And these are based on thoroughly learning standards as well. I have a number of options here. So Murphy, I think, is a preschooler. So Murphy's not real. He's a puppy dog. Uh, and he is a preschooler. He's almost five. Uh, so I would probably pick creativity with preschoolers. And here it says cotton balls, so that's how it got in here, and I can save it to my map. So one example of how you could use the GPS, some of these tools, and use the GPS. Let's say that you did the milestones, and you're a little bit concerned about your children's science skills, and your child is a preschooler, and you're going to the park this, half, this weekend, and you want to find something that's science-related that you can do outside. So you come in here, and let's, let's do the search. I'm going to, I have a preschooler, I'm going to be out and about, and I want to do science. So I see what activities I can do out and about. I can go to the library and check out books about life cycles. That sounds interesting. Uh, we can look for bugs, so let's do that. We'll look for bugs. So I can save this to my map, and since my dog is, my, my child is a dog, he would probably like to look for bugs. So let's say we go to the park, we look for bugs, I take pictures of him looking for bugs. I can come back to my map, so I can pull this up when we go out and about. I can read what our activity will be. He does the activity. I take pictures of set, that activity, and then I put the activity, I post some of those pictures. Now this is just for you. There's, this is not public, just you would be able to see it, but I upload some of those photos of Murphy looking for bugs. And then I might go back to my milestones and check that off if it meets a milestone. So this is a pretty cool tool. And then you can see that they're sorted by the skill and the age of, the skill and age level. And then this tab is the program checklist. This is something that people can use when they're looking for a childcare or a preschool program. So they go and visit and they have a lot of questions what they do is they, they put in the name of the program themselves. It is not connected to any kind of a database at this point. And then they answer these questions. Is the program convenient? Does it meet regulations? 
They can add comments as well. And then they save it. And then they can do that for as many programs as they visit. Now, if they hit the print button, they can print everything that's in their map, in their child's map. So they can actually print those answers out and have them side by side if they want to. So now what I want to do is I want to go into the quiz. And one of the ways that we've been working with people to think about how to use the early learning GPS is have families think about a question that they already have about their child. And then use the early learning GPS to answer that question. So the quiz is set up as 10 questions. And none of the answers are wrong answers. They're all answers based on the family situation. So some of them are better practices than others, but none of them are wrong. And we actually reviewed these questions and answers through 40 fo focus groups during the first phase of development. Once we got the race to the top money, we did another five focus groups, and we have changed the, line, the text quite a bit. We adjusted the literacy level to about a sixth grade literacy level. We condensed the tips to less than two minute videos. We did a lot of things that families asked us to do. So this has been reviewed and reviewed and reviewed by families. Now it's asking me now if I would like to continue where I left off or if I'd like to start over. I'm going to start over. And the way that it's set up now, so the way that it's set up now is that you um, can go to one of four sections and get started. Your child's brain, and that is about what I've just done is I've reduced the sound. So all of these slides are narrated. So if you don't want to read them, you can just listen. Um, the four sections in the quiz are your child's brain, and this is about brain development and how it starts before learning starts before birth and how much develop the brain develops by age five. Your child's development, so this is about developmental milestones and children following their own path, their own pace. Um, you and your child, this is about building a strong bond with your child early on, talking to your child's doctor, so there's a, health, a lot of health-related uh, content in there. Uh, what you do, like what you can do with, with daily chores to help your child learn and grow. And then when your child is not with you, this talks about if you need anybody else who's going to care for your child when they're not around. So it could be your spouse, it could be a babysitter, it could be a child care program, but things to think about and look for. And you can always go back to your map, back and forth between your map and the quiz. So the big question that we were talking about is how do I know my child will be ready for kindergarten? And if I were going to answer that question, I would start with your child's development. So each of these sections has sort of a splash page to explain what that section is about and why your child's development is so important. Then you have a multiple choice. So here we have when my child turns five years old, I would expect him to. And one of these is age appropriate, one of these is a little bit ahead, and one of these is a little bit behind. And then if you don't know what to expect. So a lot of families have really unrealistic expectations for their child's development. Uh, others don't even know where to go. And here we have a short video. So the short, this one is probably less than two minutes. And it's talking about where those different milestones are. So we answered that we didn't know what to expect. So it is providing me with where each of those milestones fall on the typical path. And then each of these has a quick tip. And this one is saying, check out the milestones for your child's age on the milestones tab talk with your child's doctor and other adults, and if you think there might be a delay, you can call the Connect helpline to get additional help. If I wanted to just read this, I can read it, or I can continue to view the video. Now, let's say I wanted to share this video with my sister so that we could talk about Murphy together. I'm going to save it to my map. I'm going to write a note. Check out the vid on development.
and then when I go to my map, she can go to the save tips and she can see what your preschooler can do at five years old. So she can watch the video. How did she know about it? Because I would have her look at the notes. Hey, sis, check out the bit on development. But I wasn't done with the quiz, so I'm going to go back to the quiz. And I'm going to stay where I was. So we had answered the question. We got a simple tip. I decided I liked it, so I saved it to my map. I left a note for my sister to check it out later. And now I can look at resources that are related to that question. So I've already been through here before. Uh, some of these are quizzes, some of them are videos. They're all related specifically to that question. So it's not going to big general web pages and digging and digging. So I have already saved the Watch Me Grow checklist, which is on the PA's Promise website. This online quiz, which is way more detailed about developmental milestones. A lot of families are, had expressed interest in learning the signs of autism, so we put something here. The other thing I did not mention is that if you look at these quizzes or these tips at the bottom, it has the source of where the information came from. So all of these are from reliable resources like Zero to Three, Pennsylvania's Office of Child Development and Early Learning, and that helps people feel that they're getting reliable information. So now, this, that's basically the format of how the questions go. It's question, tip, resources. Now I can look at all those resources I saved. So here's the autism one. And then if I'm tired of it, I can remove it. I can always put it back on later if I wanted to do that. If for some reason I wanted to see all the online resources, I can click here and just go through all of them and save whatever I want to my map. So things to think about, um, again, for information to include in the GPS itself, Think about things that we could use as push notifications. Think about things that we can use as local resources and online resources. And you can go to the CIZ Internet on the PA Keys website for that information. Now we have some other resources online about how to share. So I am going to take you to the PA's Promise for Children website by clicking on here and then go to Help Your Child Grow and Early Learning GPS. And you will see here, Help Spread the Word. And on here we have, you can order our free GPS promotional kits. They include 100 bookmarks, 10 table tents, and five posters. Now if you want to just get bookmarks or posters, you can also order them individually, and it is all free. So these are great to share with all your community members. You can order as many as you would like. The other items we have in here, I encourage you to add a link to your website. We have the logos on here. We have a brief description. We also have social media posts, so Facebook and Twitter posts. There's a number of those, so you could schedule them over time. We also have some articles if you want to use those as well. Something that we're working on that we've just started working on, um, if you want, we're going, we have a video, a 20-minute video that you can share with people, and this quick start guide. So what this does is get you started. If you had a group of families and you wanted to get together quickly and start working together, this starts you on that path. Now this is set up for mostly for families of preschoolers, but you could tweak it for all families. And it helps you look at some of the questions about development, about building a strong bond, things they can do at home, and then conversations that they should have. And it takes you step by step. It also gives you possible homework assignments.
Now we've labeled this for pre-K orientations and kindergarten readiness programs, but you can adjust it for anything. And then it comes with an activity sheet for families. So one thing that's interesting in this is the idea of giving families activity points for the amount of time that they spend in the GPS. So you can decide, and the Quick Start Guide gives you a guide of how many points people should get. And then you can have, use this sheet to fill out, you know, people, families show you that they've done the thing that you're asking them to do. For example, create an account, save a tip, and then you give them so many points. And then as a group, you can decide, well, if a family gets 10 points, they might get a coupon to some event, or they might get free stuff, or they might get added to a raffle. You can decide what they earn based on the amount of points. So it's sort of like the plenty concept, where you might all decide to have gifts that are important to families, and they use this to be eligible to win them, that kind of thing. So the other thing that the, we will do with the CIZs is we do get data monthly of how many people visit the site and how many people register and create accounts. And those accounts we know by county and how many visit by city. So what we do, what we're going to try to do is every month give you data on that so that you can track if you did a bunch of outreach in a particular month, you can see the benefit of that outreach in terms of how many people came to the site and how many people created accounts. Now we don't have that deep level of detail for the apps. We will know accounts created through the apps, that'll be part of the total accounts, but we don't necessarily know how many people visited through the app. Uh, but it is helpful to have that kind of information and we want to give you as much data as we can so that you can help make decisions to do uh, different outreach. We are also going to create, we're creating um, a marketing and outreach work group with the CIZs to help come up with more strategies to make it easier for you to use the tool. So this was sort of an overview. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. We will continue to give you resources. We'll have some live webinars so you can answer questions as well. But thank you very much for your time.